This is my CNC machine. Don't let the video fool you, it's actually really tiny. I made it when I lived in a very small apartment, and it had to fit between my desk and a wall. I had just a couple feet to work with. In fact, you can see that the desk is actually folded underneath the CNC enclosure. I'm having PTSD just looking at this. It's designed to be as absolutely compact as was humanly possible. I may have actually designed it to be a bit too compact. It may be small, but it is packed with features. And amongst those features is a full flood coolant system, which is why it has this enclosure. It lets me make as big of a mess as I want, flinging coolant and chips everywhere, even in an apartment. This is definitely a problem without the enclosure. I know from experience. Overall, it worked really well. The only real problem was when the coolant got foul. Hey, did you pick the dog beans again? Although recently it started to have accidents in the shop. It's also feeling a little bit inadequate with him around. So let's give it some much needed TLC. In the machine, all surfaces are designed to, to lead south, except for one surface, which is this big flat area. The problem is that this flat area can accumulate a bunch of coolant faster than it can drain. And then this leads to it leaking. I can fix the leaking coolant by just sealing up the tub a little better, but the coolant accumulating and not going into the pump starves it of coolant, which then reduces performance significantly. I've been doing the traditional ritual of avoiding the problem until it becomes a huge one. Recently, the mill started tripping my GFCI outlets, and my initial reaction was just to move the plug to a non-GFCI outlet and carry on. But then I thought about it a little bit, and if the GFCI is being blown, that probably means that current is flowing through someplace that it shouldn't, meaning the mill. So I thought, all right, it's probably a pretty good idea to install a ground wire on this, which should prevent any current from flowing through me. And then I thought maybe I need a warning and I need to be careful not to touch the ground and the mill at the same time. <coughs> so thinking this through, I realized I really should fix it because this could result in death of the pump motor at least. What I believe is happening is that the motor is sitting in the coolant and chips, which are getting flung up into it by the cooling fan. And this must have always been happening, so I'm not sure why I didn't see this problem before. Maybe I'm wearing through the windings now. I had this little protective fez I designed to keep chips and coolant out of the motor, but I didn't anticipate the whole pan being flooded when I made it, so I guess it's not enough to stop this problem. So my plan is to cut out the entire flat area and replace it with a not flat area, and this will be a new sub-assembly that I'll bolt onto the machine. This is the CAD for my CNC machine. What I've come up with for the coolant pump, which is this blue container with this pump on top, is tucking it down underneath the coolant tray so it's completely out of the way of coolant and chips and there's just no possibility of anything getting into the motor. And what this also does is it gives me this big funnel so that truly all roads lead south now and there isn't any flat areas for, for coolant to accumulate. I've also added this large filter, so this plate with all the screws in it. There'll be a wire mesh in here, which will filter all the coolant coming down into this funnel. And it has a lot of surface area, so I think I should have absolutely no problem getting the coolant through it. There's a bunch of other details to getting this to work. I'll, I'll show them off as I, as I build it. So I have all the parts cut out. And I am really loving the pen plotter on the plasma cutter. It is so handy. Locating all these bends so all these parts fit up would be such a nightmare without that tool. Just look, at, look at this part here. Each of these lines is a bend. And if these bends aren't in the right spots, they're not, it's not going to line up with these parts. It conforms to this bottom edge here. And if I don't bend it in all the right places, then it won't fit at all. I know my bending setup isn't the best. I have had a much nicer bender on order for going on a month now. They've shipped two to me so far, and both of them have been destroyed in transit. The first one, they dropped off a truck, allegedly. The second one, they brought to my house, and it was shipped from the factory in a crate. And when it got to my house, it was just a bare tool, <laughs> covered in forklift blade scratches. Uh, I don't know what the deal is, but they send a third one, and they promise the third time's the charm. Shout out to these digital angle gauges. They're super cheap and useful for all kinds of stuff. For example, turning my crappy bender into a slightly less crappy bender. If you do anything with angles, and who doesn't, I highly recommend you pick one up. This part is definitely the hardest one in the system. The reason for that is it has a 
series of up, down, up, down bends that are all at really oddball angles. Really wonder what kind of moron would design this part. They have to be placed really accurately and bent very accurately because they line up with two side panels that they have to form a watertight joint with. I don't think I could do this part without the pen plotter head. I'm also using my press brake to make a bunch of these bends and this is an awesome tool. It has really long fingers that let you get into tight spots for oddball bends. And the way the fingers mount is really simple. So if you want to make a custom finger for something that needs a lot of clearance, it's not hard to do. It also is a 20 ton press. So this will bend some seriously thick steel and it pairs really well with the plasma cutter for this reason. You can cut out some 3 8 inch steel plate and then bend it into super strong brackets and save yourself a lot of time welding or whatever. Normally whenever I make sheet metal parts, I always go kind of crazy. I always end up making some kind of bend that I just can't do with the equipment that I have and have to resort to crazy shenanigans to get it bent. But I was able to make all these bends and measure the angles with the equipment I have. It looks like everything lines up, which is cool. This is one of the side pieces. I'm actually going to be using a different technique than I've ever used before. I cut out a bunch of these little tabs, which I'm going to be bending an angle in. I'll be spot welding these in a bunch of locations, and then I will try to spot weld the whole structure together. I'm, I'm starting by welding all of the tabs to the inner piece with all the bends. Then I'm going to weld the two outer panels to that. I'm shooting to have the tabs slightly shy of the edge, that way they're actually pulling on the panels. The spot water should not be sparking like this normally. These parts that I plasma cut had a little bit of slag on them, which I think was making a small gap that was leading to arcing. I wasn't too bothered by it, so I didn't do anything about it, but normally spot welding is not exciting at all. You can, you can see the tabs being compressed here and pulling the pieces together, which is cool. So let's just skip through all this boring stuff. Uh, let's go to the next step. Normally I spend at least three quarters of the time cursing at the welder and my fixturing and not only was this easy, it also is probably the best, best results I've ever gotten. The seams are really nicely lined up. Pen plotter helped a lot here, placing all these bends really well. The spot welding is definitely a really important part. Without better welding fixturing, this would have been very difficult to hold together and weld with the TIG. I do think I'm gonna go for it and just see if I can maybe weld some of these edges together since the fit is nice and tight, just to see if I can. I'm definitely gonna blow a hole in there, but just give it a shot. My TIG welding skills are not notable in any way. In fact, I'm probably below average. So I'm not gonna be showing any glamor shots of me stacking dimes I don't think I've ever even done that. This sequence here is enough just to show you what I was up to and we can move on to the next step. I was actually able to weld all the edges and I think they're watertight. The only way to really know is fill it up with water and that's kind of hard to do with this big hole in the bottom. I ground the edges just a little bit just to clean them up. They're not the nicest welds, but they, they are there. And I only punched two holes in it. This is pretty cool. This is definitely one of the best tub experiences I've ever had. Uh, it's almost always a nightmare. This is going to be the frame for the filter. I'm gonna be using this 120 mesh stainless steel screen. The hole size is 125 microns, about 5 thousandths of an inch. If chips get into the coolant system, they can clog up the nozzle and cause all kinds of issues. So I think this will work. If it doesn't work, this is designed to bolt in. So it doesn't really matter that it's a potato chip because it'll be bolted down to another piece. And if it doesn't work, I can just make another filter with a finer mesh. This is just what I had available. So I'm going to just basically glue it to this frame and then glue it, these pieces on top. And that'll give me a sandwich with the filter in between that I can then just punch out these holes and then bolt into the assembly. All right, it's the next day. Time to find out if this thing worked. The adhesive didn't stick nearly as well as I was hoping, so I'm gonna just go over it with a spot welder. This was particularly difficult to spot weld because I was welding through the, the sealant that was already there, and that's why there's all that smoke coming out of the weld joints. So this is the frame that holds the filter in place. 
and the filter bolts on because I need to be able to replace it. I know, just know I'm going to drop a sharp tool down into it and punch a hole clean through it. So to be able to replace it, it bolts in. And to be able to actually get the bolts in, I need to somehow not have a nut on the back because I can't reach through. There's a, a screen in the way. The whole point of this is nothing can get through if it doesn't, unless it goes through the screen. So to solve that problem, I'm going to be using riv nuts, which are basically a cross between a rivet and a nut. You can rivet them into a hole and they're threaded on the inside. So they act like a nut, but they don't turn and they're captive and fixed in place. To install a riv nut, very similar to a rivet, except for they thread into the riveter instead of just pushing in. Then you just give the riveter a squeeze and the nut sets into place, hopefully, basically forever. This is actually a pretty tricky part to get right because it has to fit quite snugly into this space here. And so if I'm off at all, it's not gonna fit so well. And I'd actually rather be undersized than oversized. If I overshoot, there's no chance of getting it in there without bending the walls. But if I undershoot, I can actually bend these flanges out, which is why I designed it this way, so that it basically can, can widen up to fill this gap and it looks like it's a pretty good fit, but they'll probably need to bend out a, a small amount, maybe half a millimeter or so. Before I bolt the filter down, I need to install one last piece. So what this piece does is it ensures that the coolant goes into the coolant tank. Flowing liquids have this really annoying property where when they flow out of a hole, they'll tend to travel along a surface that's horizontal even. And so what I don't want to happen is coolant is flowing out of this hole and it's going sideways and then leaving the system. And so what this does is it's basically a, a lip or a rim. The coolant will flow through here and then it has to drip off this rim if it wants to flow sideways, it has to go back up a vertical wall, which it can't do. So the new drain is done, and in order to install it, I have to remove the old one, as well as cut a big hole in the bottom of the enclosure. And I was being extremely careful here because I have a whole tank of coolant that I really didn't want to spill. And this was hard because the enclosure is too big for me to reach around. So I was having to reach through the little hole to hold it up. Oh no, that's not good. Well, I guess I gotta get the kitty litter. You should have kitty litter in your shop. Hopefully you'll never need it, but you'll be really glad when you do. So this is pretty ironic because I was thinking the whole time that I have to be really careful not to spill this coolant. I was holding on to the coolant pump very carefully and it turns out the coolant pump is not attached to the coolant tank. I thought that it was, but the screws that I was unscrewing actually go through the coolant pump and into the tank and they're not attached in any other way. So as soon as the last screw came out, it dropped. The mill has had a lot of accidents on the floor this is the first time it's taken a dump. Well, that was an hour I was not expecting to be spending. So on the bright side, I was worried about having to handle that container of coolant and spilling it, and now I don't have to worry about it anymore because I just got it out of the way up front, spilled it all, there's no more coolant left to spill, so I'm good. And in a way, this is basically a win, you know, if we use business logic. Actually, there was still a bit more coolant to spill and I just spilled it. I thought I got all the coolant out of the pump, but now it's all out. So now we're good. No more coolant to spill. It's a really bad idea to grind near the mill because the sparks coming off the grinder are actually little pieces of hot steel. And when they cool down, they're still little pieces of steel. And if you get these into the moving parts of the mill, it can really wreak havoc on a lot of stuff. So I put this giant trash bag over it just to keep everything off it. And I'm also cutting from the bottom, both because it's easier to get in there, also just to keep less steel dust off the machine. Building this enclosure is what convinced me to build the plasma cutter because it is such an absolute pain to cut through 16 gauge steel, 
especially upside down in situ like this, but even just building this enclosure was such a pain without the plasma cutter. Similar to the filter mount, I'm using rib nuts to hold this onto the machine. And this will let me easily get it off if I need to do service in the future. The most likely service I might need to do is taking it off to add more sealant between it and the rest of the enclosure. It is designed so that coolant shouldn't be able to leave, but we'll see about that. Now I'm using my fancy leg support to get everything bolted on. And the fit is really good. I didn't have to really force anything to, to fit. This is the coolant pump and it needs to mount here. So I cut out and spot welded up a little stand that will bolt here and it has slots. So basically I can, can raise and lower this up and down to get the spout into the hole on the, the coolant. And then I just made this little cross beam here to give it strength and torsion. There's just four rib nuts that hold everything on. I promise if you haven't used rib nuts for stuff like this before, they're awesome. It's so much better than trying to deal with little nuts. The coolant tank and pump is now mounted. Most importantly, the motor is now tucked under here, totally out of the way of coolant and chips. Before I was getting all kinds of coolant and chips into this cooling fan in the bottom, which was shooting coolant into the motor itself, causing ground faults. Hopefully the motor's still good, but if it does die, I can replace it easily because everything is serviceable and removable, hopefully without dropping the entire coolant container on the ground again. So finally, the moment I've been waiting for, which is getting to turn this thing on and see if it works. Did I make it right? 50% odds I didn't. And on initial running, everything seems good. I ran it for about an hour. There's no leaks and no slowdown of the, the coolant. We got a big billet in here. It's about a two and a half inch cube. And I'm gonna just machine it down, take off maybe an inch or so. And this should be a good test of the coolant system, chip build up and all that stuff. So the top half of the billet is now down here in the drain and that looked really good. There's still some material left, so I'm gonna keep going with another pass. So I turned a two inch tall billet into a half inch thick plate. Not a very useful application of a CNC machine, but it was a useful test. And there's a ton of chips down here. And it had absolutely no problem whatsoever draining. Even with all these chips, everything was going right through. There was no buildup and no leaking anywhere, which is really actually kind of surprising and great to see. I definitely couldn't have done this with my previous setup. What would have happened is that all of the coolant would have pulled on this flat area, especially with the chip buildup blocking the small filter. The motor would have been full of coolant and chips and there would have been coolant all over the floor and then there wouldn't have been any coolant coming out of the sprayer either. So let's look at these coolant systems side by side. There's a really small subtle difference between them. One of them is submerged in coolant and has a bunch of chips being blown up into the motor windings. The other one doesn't. You know, it's okay if you can't see it. It's, it is very subtle, but trust me, it's there and it's a really nice improvement. I was trying to optimize all things coolant and I came up with a new coolant sprayer design that fixes a bunch of issues I was having with the old one, but this video is getting a bit long at this point, so I'll save this one for later. I did want to show it off because it's super cool and works a whole lot better than it did before. So overall, I'm really happy with this coolant system. It performs a million times better than the previous one. I think the spot welding technique for building tubs, I, I'm sure I didn't invent this, I'm certain I didn't, but it works really well, I highly recommend it. And it was a whole lot easier to build this oddball tub that way. If you like what you see, you should consider subscribing. It's the best way to show me that you want more. And uh, otherwise, if you have comments or questions or anything, leave them in the comments, I love to read them. And that is all I got for now, thank you.